Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to do a hot water irrigation experiment. I'm calling this an experiment because I was in bed and watching YouTube like we all do, and I came across a tutorial and I absolutely fell in love with it and I thought, I've, I've got to try this. Um, so I was watching Mio's tie-dye. So some of you have already found his channel because I see your comments and I recognize you. Um, but for those of you that watch my channel, um, head over after this tutorial and check out Mio's tie-dye, M-E-O-S tie-dye. And I will uh, put a link for his tutorial down in the description box. Um, head over there, please subscribe to his channel. He's new to YouTube and you know, let's help get that content out there so more people can learn how to tie dye. All right, let's talk about the experiment part. So like I said, I was in bed and I had absolutely nothing prepared for this shirt other than, you know, the shirt's been pre-washed. And how I do my pre-wash is I do a hot water cycle using Synthropol and then I stick it in the dryer and I dry it completely. The reason why I dry all my blanks is because I don't want the moisture from the pre-wash diluting my soda ash and lowering the pH. So I grabbed one of my shirts from my pre-wash stack and I threw it in the soda ash bucket and I only did it for 10 minutes. Normally I do 20 minutes to, you know, like 20 days. Um, but I've seen other people that do hot water irrigation like uh, Justin Biffer and Kurt Wallace and I believe they do not pre-soak their shirts. So I thought, I'm gonna give that a try, but just in case, I threw it in there for 10 minutes and then I spun it out until it's barely damp and then I just spiral it up and I secure it with rubber bands. That's a pretty good looking spiral. I still got it, you guys. I can make spirals without using the splash guard, but boy, does that splash guard make things easy. And then when I do my spirals, I try to locate where the tag is, and I make that the top of my shirt. It doesn't matter, but it helps me decide what colors do I want near the face. And then using a washable marker, I just mark out my pattern. Here's where more of the experiment comes in. So many of you watched the previous hot water irrigation, and if you haven't seen that, I recommend it so you'll understand what I'm talking about. But for those of you that did watch it, you saw me apply the dye in a bottle that I had pre-mixed the dye with soda ash. And I'll tell you, in the future, I'm definitely going to use the bottle technique because it's a lot easier to get the dye on the shirt, and I used way less dye by using the pre-mixed soda ash dye combo. If you notice how many times I'm dipping into this jar and taking rather big scoops, um, it's just not cost effective doing it this way. And with the periwinkle, it's a more dense dye and so is the golden yellow. So getting it on there in a nice smooth layer uh, was more difficult. Now the hot pink is more fluffy and so I didn't have any trouble getting that on there. So like I said, in the future, the bottle technique with the soda ash mixture is much, much easier. And then right here, I just wanted to make the periwinkle a little bit wider. So that's all I'm doing right here is just adding a little more periwinkle. And while I was doing it, I dropped a huge clump right down into the center of the spiral. Ugh, so that means all the colors are gonna get muddy down in there. The next step is to put on a mask and add some soda ash. 
Since I didn't do a long pre-soak and I didn't use the pre-mixed dye soda ash combination, you wanna add a generous layer of soda ash to your project. Since I'm doing this indoors on my dye table, I put my rack down inside of a bin. That way it can help contain all the extra moisture. In a perfect world, I would take this outside if you can. Um, Justin does it in his bathtub, which is a genius idea, but I don't have the luxury of doing that. And now what I'm doing is more of the experiment, right? So I boiled water to 180 degrees and then I put it in my pump sprayer and brought it to my dye table. And I'm going hard on this, you guys. I'm being super aggressive, I'm being wild, I'm going fast, I'm letting it puddle. You know, I'm doing everything that everybody says not to do, because I'm curious, what is gonna happen to this shirt if I just, you know, like, don't treat it respectfully? So, stay tuned to see the results. So all of the dye and soda ash look well dissolved. So I check the pleats, yep, there's dye in there. So I flip it over and now I'm gonna do a black back. For this, I did go with the bottle because I just felt like it would be easier. And the ratio I mixed was 1 4th cup of soda ash to four teaspoons of Raven Black. And as you notice, look how easily that's going on. The bottles really do make it so simple, you guys. I want to point out that this is my first time doing a black back hot water irrigation so I don't know how much I'm supposed to add so I just went for it and I want you guys to remember that when you're making your tie-dye you don't know until you try so just go for it and have fun and again I'm going hard with the sprayer I'm not being nice to this shirt. I'm letting it puddle. I'm doing everything I'm told not to do because again, I'm experimenting. I want to see what, you know, what is really actually going to happen if you just go crazy. So I ran out of water and the dye looked well dissolved, so I stopped. And I flipped it back over because I didn't want the black to have time to overtake the entire shirt. And in theory, hot water irrigation is done and it can go right into the washing machine. But I needed to go set up the camera and get my washing machine, you know, the water all filled up in there. And then Survivor was on, so I got sidetracked watching Survivor. So without commercials, that's about 45 minutes. So the shirt sat for 45 minutes approximately and then I'm coming to the sink and I'm going to do the rinse out and you treat it like you do any other shirt so you want to start by using cold water to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the shirt and that's because you're going to try to help get the soda ash out so you don't get dye back you know you don't want the dark colors depositing onto the light and then you want to rinse until the water runs pretty much clear now from here, I take it to the washing machine and I do a hot water cycle. I do a second hot water cycle using Synthropol and then I do a third hot water cycle using Milsoft and I get all of that stuff from Dharma. So check it out in the description box down below. And then I'll put it in the dryer and we'll come back and see our results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our hot water irrigation experiment after it's been washed and dried. I love this shirt. I think it turned out great. This is the George brand shirt that you can pick up from Walmart and they say 100% cotton, but I'm not 100% sure if I believe that because they really do feel like they have spandex in them. They're extremely soft, but they also have this like springy stretch to them. So right off the bat, the shirt sort of has a faded outlook and I'm not sure if that's because it's the hot water irrigation or if it's just the shirt. Um, either way, I still love it. And it kind of has the appearance of an ice dye. Do you guys notice that? I I'm really happy with this shirt. And you know, within two hours, you know, I had this incredible shirt. 
So thank you, Mio. I appreciate your inspiration. And you guys, don't forget to head over to his channel and please subscribe and help a fellow tie-dyer out. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up, and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.